Whenever light shines on an object, three possible things, three main possible things can happen. And sometimes, quite often, all three happen at the same time. Light can be absorbed by the medium. And then it's going to change into heat, other types of energy. It can bounce off the medium. That's what we call reflection. Or it can refract or move into the medium. The word refraction means bend, like what we have here. So it would travel within the medium at a different speed uh, in that medium. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, all three can happen at the same time. Uh, to illustrate one of those phenomena, the reflection, uh, I'm going to use this simulation from the Florida State University website, uh, uh, the Large Magnet Lab, which is a very uh, amazing lab, and one of the resources they provide is these neat simulations. Uh, okay, I have it already running here on this screen. Uh, I set it up such that we have a white surface with no roughness, a perfectly flat surface. And then we are shining white light on it. What we mean by white light, you have all visible colors shining on it at the same time. And as you notice here, the reflected light is going to have all the visible colors as well. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the color of the surface. Okay, when it is red, you notice only the red portion of the light is going to be reflected. So all other wavelengths are absorbed by the surface. That's the way we see objects usually. If you see a red shirt, you are going to see it red because it's going to reflect red light. If it is a green shirt, it's going to reflect green light. Blue shirt, blue light. If it is black, it's going to absorb everything and not to allow for any reflection. Okay. Now, how do we see an object? The important thing is that the light that's going to bounce off the object is going to hit our eye, go through our pupil, and make an image of that object on the back of our retina. I mean, on our retina. I'm not sure why I said back, but it has to make an, I an image on our retina. Okay, now, um, usually the light that's going to bounce off objects is going to come from the sun, if it is outside, or light sources, like light bulbs or whatever, if we are indoors. Um, and sometimes some objects themselves are going to emit light. We, once an image of that object is on our retina, we, uh, our brain allows us to figure out the position of the object by kind of somewhat comparing both images on the retina, and essentially that's determined from uh, how the light rays come from that object to our eye. Okay. As I mentioned while showing you the other simulation, color is because some of the light is absorbed by, uh, by objects before bouncing off. Okay, now, one interesting thing. I picked up this picture from the Wikipedia website. So we have a tree here. And what we do here, we have a box with a tiny hole on it what's called a pinhole camera. 
and actually if you do that at the back of the box if you have a dark box uh, an image is going to form that's an image of the tree in this case our object that's going to be upside down like this um, to try to explain that uh, I have a simulation running uh, that uh, illustrates that the simulation it is running on our server here uh, at Kennesaw uh, but it is actually developed by some um, uh, gentlemen uh, out of uh, uh, Taiwan uh, who did a lot of neat simulations like this they are not as fancy in terms of the looks but the physics is really great okay so here is our box so we are uh, seeing a perspective of it you see me I can rotate it and instead of a tree we have the letter F here and actually I can click on every point here of the object and it shows us one of the light beams that's reflected of that point now this point here is reflecting light in all possible directions but we are focusing only on that beam that's going to go through that hole okay we have this other beam it's going to pass through the hole now to be able to pass through the hole is just because of the geometry it's going to be above the other beam that we we had here and if we go to this other one it's going to be in the other side and this one from the other side now every object is going to reflect light like this we see it when enough of those light rays are going to meet at a particular point to form an image like we have here our eye except for the fact that we have lenses in the eye but the basic principle of our eye is the same as this it is somewhat a pinhole where in uh, in the back of our eye on our retina some light beams are going to reach the retina to form an upside in, uh, an upside down image of the objects we look at now uh, what if the hole is a little larger what's going to happen if the hole is a little larger Okay, and I can actually increase it here. Uh, come on. Okay, see here. Now, when the hole is a little larger, the problem is several of these beams are going to be able uh, are going to be able to go through the hole and make an image. So instead of having one single image of that object, we are going to have a bunch of them. In this case, it's still fine. We are still seeing an F. But if the hole is too large, then we are going to have too many images and we will not be able to distinguish the image anymore. So all these images are going to overlap, and we are going to we are not going to be able to have a clear image anymore. You notice that with your eyes. When you go outside, your pupil gets smaller, getting smaller. That's to reduce the amount of light that's going to go into your eye, and allow for lesser images form on your retina so you distinguish it better now um, also you notice when you try to look at something and you cannot see it very well you squint you try to reduce the amount of light uh, that gets into your eye by reducing the amount of light you are seeing a more distinct image okay 
Okay, now um, to explain one of the items I mentioned while discussing this, I'm going to be, uh, go back to this simulation here. Okay, so what we are going to do right now, we are going to have more of a realistic surface, like this surface here. Notice now what happens, I'm going to make it white, what happens if the surface is not flat, it's not perfectly smooth. So we have light reflected in a lot of directions, not just in one direction, like when it was flat. That's the way we can see an object. A person here is going to be able to see the white surface, likewise a person here, a person here, a person here, people from all directions, because of the roughness of the surface, we are going to have light reflected in all directions. When we talked about the pinhole, the F, for example, any object we look at is going to reflect light in all directions the same way as this surface is reflecting light in all directions. And that's why if we place the hole here we should be able to see the object if we place it here we should be able to see the object if we place it here we should be able to see the object and so on now a pinhole camera is not just a construct these are pictures that I found online you know you have a website for example called pinhole.org this image here for example is taken with a pinhole camera um, uh, notice this one here too Notice how everything is in focus. This is in focus, and the back is also in focus. Um, regular pictures that you take with regular cameras do not do that. Uh, they don't have the depth of field of a pinhole camera. Look at this one here. Everything is in focus. The front, all the way as in the back. Everything is in focus. Uh, that's an advantage of pinhole cameras. It has a lot more disadvantages. Uh, that you can read about uh, by checking these links if you are interested in that. 